Alright, I'm going to try and make this review as quickly as possible, because to be perfectly honest, this show, besides one match, does not even really need to be talked about. If it's going to be talked about, it's going to be hugely negatively, because this... I've honestly, I've never felt so sick to my stomach. Honestly, I've been, I was laying in bed for at least a good half hour after the show, because my stomach, it's still hurting right now. I just... I, I'll, I'll get to it when I get to it. I'm just... I just want to get through this review because I don't even want to talk about the show right now. Of course, for the pay-per-view to kick off, which was supposed to be a six-man tag team elimination match, but it was turned into a regular tag team match. I don't know why, but it did. Uh, the New Day, Kofi Kingston, Big E took on uh, Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. Fun little match here because of the crowd. The crowd was really, you know, on the side of uh, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro. Heavily booing New Day. They even started a New Day Sucks channel, which I honestly love because I don't like the New Day. But, you know, this is, uh, you know, I guess the crowd made it fun, so, you know, nothing really special happened here. Uh, some near falls, though. There were actually a lot of near falls. I was kind of surprised how many near falls this match had, because, you know, it kept going back and forth. But Cesaro and Kid have been the victory when Cesaro gave Kofi uh, uppercuts, followed by a neckbreaker by Tyson Kidd. So, good thing they won. Happy about that. But, you know, nothing really worthy happened on the kickoff. We go on the pay-per-view, which opened up with the New Age Outlaws versus the Ascension. Uh, whatever match here, you know, nothing really... Nothing really happened here, you know, uh, Billy Gunn, I think he proved that he's still in shape, and he, even though he's 51 years old, he can honestly still go, he looks great. Um, besides that, nothing else, like I said, happened here, Ascension won with the Man of Fall, uh, Billy Gunn looked great, Road Dog was just there, and, you know, put the Ascension over, so nothing too much happened there in the opening match. Uh, then we go into a backstage segment with the Authority, basically complaining about Sting, and Paul Heyman came out and basically said Brock Lesnar can, you know, take care of their Sting problem. Um, whatever segment, you know, Steph looked amazing, she looked hot, as always, so I guess that was the, uh, you know, a good thing for that segment, but yeah, nothing special there. We go on to the WWE Tag Team Championship match, the Usos versus The Miz and Damian Mizdow. Actually, a very good match here, I'd probably say the best Usos versus Miz and Mizdow match yet. Um, you know, better than a TLC match, better than their matches on Raw. Uh, I actually really enjoyed this, it was a lot of fun, Mizdow was great as always. Uh, just a lot of near falls in this match as well, I don't, I don't know what's up with this, uh, this show ad. Like, two or three matches were just, they had a lot of near falls and could have easily won either way. So this was an enjoyable tag team match. Like I said, probably the best one to date between those two teams, in my opinion. Um, Miz got pinned, of course, with the uh, Samoan splash at the top rope from one of the Usos for the 1, 2, 3 to retain the tag team titles. So, you know, good tag team match, but nothing really newsworthy besides, you know, Miz out being great as always. Uh, after that, we have a backstage segment with J&J &J Security. You know, they're, they're just playing WWE Immortal on their whatever, and, you know, Rollins confronted him. And just, you know, a little funny skit, whatever, nothing special. Uh, the, we go on to the Bellas versus Paige and Natalia, which was actually not that bad as I thought it was going to be. You know, people really put down the match, but I thought it was good for what it was. You know, I thought um, uh, the Bellas were good. They actually pulled out some, you know, cool tag team maneuvers I haven't seen or I haven't seen in quite some time. So it was cool to see the Bellas work together again because they haven't had tag team matches in quite some time. Well, they had tag team matches on Raw, but like, you know, one that's actually good like this. Uh, Paige, you know, she did her sexual stuff. She was just on the apron the majority of the matches. So it was the majority of the Natalia versus the Bella Twins for most of it. And the Bellas ended up getting the victory. You know, Nikki ended up doing the, I don't know if it's a punch or a form or what, but she ended up punching the Natalia and pinned her one, two, three right there. So, yeah, the Bellas won. I kind of expected it. You know, I, I thought Paige and Natalia would win because I would build towards one of them or both of them getting a, a Divas title match down the line. Didn't happen, so the Bellas won, so I don't know how they're going to go down with that. But... Um, yeah, for me, I thought it was a, you know, whatever Divas match. Then we go on to the match of the night, which I think will honestly probably be a WWE match of the year by the end of the year. Triple threat match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Brock Lesnar versus John Cena versus Seth Rollins. Holy shit. Now this, okay, we can get positive about this because this is fucking absolutely awesome. This was an amazing match. Um, I, honestly, the best triple threat match I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm not bullshitting. I'm not just saying that in the moment. It was honestly that spectacular. It was an amazing, amazing, amazing match. Rollins was busting out moves that he hasn't done in years. Brock looked like the fucking beast that he is, suplexing everyone. He even fucking gave JNA Security a double German suplex. Uh, just Brock looked amazing. He looked in amazing shape too, by the way. He was like, he looked great. He looked great. Cena was just there. He added to the match with that. You know, Cena made the match, you know, um, I wouldn't say better than it would have been if it was just Brock and Rollins, but I think, you know, Cena complimented the match. So this is amazing. I'm going to go out and say this. You may not agree with me. You may agree with me. It's five stars, in my opinion. This was an amazing triple threat match. Uh, the storytelling, the emotion, uh, just the drama, everything, any and every aspect of this match was fucking amazing. Uh, they both took Lesnar out. Lesnar was taking out on the stretcher, but Lesnar just got up like a beast that he is and fucking... 
went ape shit and killed everyone. This was just, you have to go out of your way to see this. Seth Rollins busted out the Phoenix Splash. I have never seen him do, well, I've seen him do it, but I haven't seen him do, do it since he debuted at Survivor Series. So, the fact that he's busting that out, and then right when he did it, Brock gave him a German, like, right after he hit it on Cena. It was, this match is fucking crazy. It was crazy. The, the near fall as well. There, Cena gave Brock four AAs. Brock kicked out of him. It's fucking, Rollins had Cena pinned. Cena had Rollins pinned multiple times. They both kicked out. Like, this match gave me, like, six heart attacks because the match almost ended that many times, at least that. So, incredible, incredible triple throw. Like I said, the greatest triple throw match I've ever seen in my entire life. Brock loves a retain after, you know, Rollins tried to give uh, Brock a curb stomp. Brock countered it into an F5 for the 1, 2, 3. So, Brock is still your WWE World of Weight Champion and will walk into WrestleMania 31 as the WWE World of Weight Champion. Fucking incredible match. I fucking loved it. And then... We go on to the 2015 Royal Rumble match, which absolutely sucked. I did not like the Rumble match at all, not just because of the outcome, just the way it was formatted. I am not a huge fan of a guy gets in and gets thrown out within a minute. I am not a fan of they did that uh, with Bray Wyatt. You know, Bray Wyatt got in the ring, I think it was like number four, number five, and he just kept throwing everyone who got in the ring right back out. He did the whole Steampunk Punk 2010 thing where he was cutting a promo, and whoever came out, he'd throw him out, get back to the mic, and cut a promo again. I was, I'm not a fan of that. I'm a fan of the Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble matches that actually has a shitload of people in the ring where it's a big clusterfuck. You can't even tell what's going on. That's the Rumble I like. I like when there's a bunch of guys and they're just beating the whole out of each other, not like three or four, just throwing everyone out. That's just, that's not fun. It's boring and slam. They did that towards the end of the match. You know, they, they got guys in there, but just, it, I didn't like this Rumble match. Uh, they had, we had some nice surprises, though. You know, Bubba Ray Dudley came out. That was a huge surprise and huge uh, pop for me. I think everyone else erupted when he came out. That was awesome seeing him. Uh, DDP was there as well, you know, looking great as always. Uh, the Boogeyman was in the match for some reason. You know, he was in there with Bray Wyatt, and Bray Wyatt just pretty much threw him out. Um, is there anyone else in the room? There might have been a few other people in the room that are worthy. Or Was there any more surprises? I can't think of any other besides those three. Those might be the only surprises there. But, um, you know, the Rumble Logic said I was a fan of it. Uh, Daniel Bryan comes at number 10. This is where, this is where it just... The crowd, Dan Bryan comes out, the crowd fucking erupts as, like, uh, sorry, uh, but, like, they erupt like a fucking volcano when Bryan comes out, and not even the number 15, Bryan's not even there for fucking five minutes, and Bray Wyatt eliminates him, and when Bray Wyatt eliminated Bryan, no one cares, no one cared for the rest of the match, no one cared who won, the, the life out of everyone was just sucked out. The crowd was just dead silent, and if they weren't silent, they were booing. It was just, it, it had the Undertaker streak f feeling to it. Not saying that that's, you know, how big it was, but like the feeling I'm pretty sure everyone felt when Taker lost, that was a feeling probably everyone else was feeling when Daniel Bryan got eliminated. It was just such a low blow. I'm carrying my stomach's here, I'm just thinking about it. It was uh, such a bullshit way to eliminate him. Not even, he entered number 10, not even number 15, he was already eliminated. Such bullshit. He should have won the Royal Rumble. They just can't learn from their mistakes. But the rest of the Rumble goes on. Roman Reigns comes out number 19, which is my favorite number, so it kind of sucks that he came out number 19 and won. But, um, yeah, he comes out number 19. You know, the crowd's booing him to death. They hate Roman Reigns. He gets in the ring, they're booing him even more. And the final four was so horrible. It was actually technically final five. But the final four was so bad. It was Reigns, Ambrose, Kane, and Big Show. And Kane and Big Show eliminated. They're just knocking everyone out, eliminating them. It was, oh, God, it was bad. Very, very bad when Kane and Big Show started teaming up. It was extremely, extremely bad. And then uh, they're trying to eliminate, and then Kane and Big Show get into it. They try to eliminate each other, and Roman Reigns comes out of nowhere and just throws them out. And I thought Roman Reigns won because apparently Rome, uh, Rusev never got eliminated. I didn't know. I walked out of the room because I was just, I probably missed like from 21 to like until Ziggler came out at number 30. I honestly didn't see a lot of the Rumble. I just walked out. I was so pissed. I'm being completely honest. So, um, you know. I guess Rusev didn't get eliminated, and then Rusev got in the ring because The Rock came out, and, you know, he's trying to, you know, help Roman Reigns, and then, you know, Reigns in the ring, and Rusev comes in the ring trying to eliminate him, Reigns ducks out, throws him over the top, and wins the Royal Rumble. Fuck, I'm getting pissed off just thinking about Roman Reigns winning the Royal Rumble. Fucking... This is his own video, honestly, ranting on Roman Reigns winning the Royal Rumble. Not saying that I don't, you know, like... They, oh, I don't like to do one, actually. I don't I don't like it at all. But the fact is, I know WWE wants him to be a star. 
But here's the thing, you don't fucking do it like this. You don't fucking throw him in the main event and expect him to be a huge fucking star. Did you not see how badly Roman Reigns was fucking booed out of the building? You're gonna sit here and tell me that's your next big star and clearly no one wants to fucking see him right now? It's fucking bullshit. It's... As a fan, you can only take so much shit until you're just like, you know what? Fuck you, alright? It's such bullshit. I'm going to WrestleMania 31. And honestly, if it wasn't in California, say if WrestleMania was like, I don't know, in Florida or some random place and I was flying there, I'd fucking sell my tickets. I wouldn't even want to fucking go anymore. Because I'm so fucking livid and pissed. Like, I understand Seth Rollins is still a huge chance of him cashing in that day. But still, the fact that Roman Reigns is in the main event and facing Brock Lesnar and most likely Brock Lesnar's last match, fucking bullshit. Why don't you give a match we actually want to fucking see? Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar would have been your perfect main event. Hell, even The Rock. I wouldn't even care if The Rock would have faced Brock Lesnar, to be perfectly honest. But the fact that Roman Reigns is getting that spot he doesn't fucking deserve and earned, it's fucking bullshit. It's honestly, I don't understand ranting right now, but it's honestly fucking bullshit. Will it, would it have been his time? In time, yes. Roman Reigns would have got there. But is, is, it, is it his time now? Fuck no. Obviously, it's still Daniel Bryan's time. You want to sit and say, well, Daniel Bryan had his moment last year. Who gives a fuck? How many moments has John Cena had? How many moments has The Rocks had? How many moments has, you know, fucking Stone Cold had? Triple H. They all have fucking more than one moment. And you can't give Daniel Bryan two that he deserves. And obviously the crowd wants to see. The crowd wants to see him win the Royal Rumble. You didn't fucking do it. They want to see him win it last year. You're so fucking stupid and didn't do it. You'd think they learned their mistake from last year. And I, I said, everyone, everyone could have predicted that if Roman Reigns would have won, they would have been an exact repeat of last year, and that's what's fucking happening. I know we still have nine weeks for WrestleMania. They can still fucking get a brain and change it. I highly doubt they will, but they still can. Even The Rock. When you go back and watch The Rock hold Roman Reigns' hands up, even The Rock's like, they're fucking giving him the rumble? Obviously, the crowd doesn't want to fucking see him. Like, I'm sorry. I'm just ranting at this point. I probably ran it for like half this video. I'm just very upset. Royal Rumble overall, I thought it was... Decent, the good, the triple threat was absolutely amazing. Like I said, five stars, in my opinion, greatest triple threat I've ever seen. The tag team title match was good. Everything else, honestly, was nothing special. Just whatever. Fuck you, WWE. I'm, God, I'm so fucking pissed. Leave your guys thoughts and comments on Royal Rumble below if you'd like. You don't have to if you don't like. I wouldn't blame you. But uh, fuck you, Roman Reigns. Fuck you, Vince. Fuck you, whoever made Roman Reigns win and think that he was the best choice when obviously no one fucking seems. So fuck you. I'm pissed. I'm out. See you guys later.